as you probably gathered, everyone wants an upmarket SUV with a premium feel these days. You might even be one of those people. And it turns out to be quite sad news for sales of other types of car, including the good old utilitarian estate. Now, one way some manufacturers have responded, other than making more SUVs and crossovers, is with a sleek shooting brake version, like this one. This is the Volkswagen Arteon shooting brake. Now, usually very stylish on the outside, as you can see, very posh on the inside as well. And because there's so very few on the market, when you do see one, it's quite hard not to be smitten. Like when I got my hands on the shooting brake version of the Mercedes CLA. I'm spending your money for you, I'm just saying. It's worth it. The interior is fit, makes me go, Phew. I don't say that often. And no, I don't say that very often, but would you look at this? Phew. VW originally launched the hatchback version of the Arteon back in 2017 as a way of offering something more stylish and upmarket than the Passat to attract buyers who usually go for a BMW or an Audi. A facelifted model was revealed in late 2020 and VW added this shooting brake estate at the same time, offering increased boot space and more headroom for rear seat passengers. The tweaks to the design of the car are fairly minimal but include new front and rear lights and new bumpers. This R-Line model looks particularly smart thanks to its sporty body kit, 19-inch alloy wheels and tinted rear windows, while chrome touches and frameless windows are there to convince you that this is a truly premium product. Close that snazzy frameless door behind you and you are greeted with an interior that's definitely a facelift from the previous Arteon compared to the minor changes that VW made on the outside. Now, one of the biggest criticisms of the pre-facelift model was that the interior was so obviously Passat related. So you'd have the nice eye-catching stylish outside, then you come on the inside and it was all just a bit bland and derivative. Not bad, just a bit meh. But this new interior, is definitely in keeping with expectations. The design is sharper. The materials used feel much better quality. I like this brushed aluminium. Plus, you've got the digital dials that come as standard combined with the infotainment touchscreen and the climate control panel, so it helps it feel more cutting edge. But what is it like to use? Well, we've seen this all before in the new Golf and the screens are sharp. Infotainment system is intuitive enough, but VW can't seem to get enough of this touchy, touchy, slidey climate control controls. I mean, when I first sat in this car, I looked at it and thought, oh, look, how retro, it looks like a cassette player. Then I thought, oh, no, it's touchy, touchy, slidey. Didn't really love it in the Golf, and I don't really love it in here. I mean, one bonus is that it's on a separate panel, so makes it a little bit easier but while you're driving you're having to touch and mush all the buttons rather than just grabbing a dial turning it clockwise for hotter anti-clockwise for not hotter i'll tell you one button that's very easy to press the subscribe button to the car buyer youtube channel hey while you're there why not click the bell icon as well and click the like button and let everyone know that you're having a right good time Volkswagen wants you to think of this car as a rival to the BMW 3 Series Touring, which is unfortunate in this department as the digital dials and the infotainment system are both bigger in the BMW and the software itself in that car is better than VW's equivalent. The infotainment system and screens aside, the interior of the 3 Series is still just ahead of the Arteon, generally, even after all of the improvements from the facelift. It's not that the BMW is miles better, but it definitely feels more luxurious and the materials used feel of higher quality. Oh, special mention has to go to these seats. <gasps> these seats, we're talking leather. We're talking 14-way electrical adjustment. We're talking massage function. They are ridiculously comfortable and they also make the cabin look and feel much posher than they would do if you just go for the standard seats. I mean, yes, they do add an extra £2,500 to the price, but, you know. The standard Arteon comes in three different trim levels called SE Nav, Elegance and R-Line. 
SE Nav is the entry-level model and only available with 148 brake horsepower petrol and diesel engines. You have to go for one of the other trims if you want more power or the plug-in hybrid. Ah, here I am in the back and I'm having a very lovely time. The materials feel really nice and you know me, I am a sucker for a panoramic roof. Now if you go for the estate version, it's going to cost you an extra 800 quid over the standard version of the Arteon. Now with that, you get slightly more headroom, that's because the roof doesn't slope down as quickly as it does in the standard, although that wasn't really a problem before, the normal Arteon is spacious enough. But if you go for the estate version, even the tallest people that are sat in the back here have plenty of headroom, loads of legroom, and room for your feet if you want to lounge in the back here. Similarly, more boot space, 565 litres, in fact, which is actually bigger than the 3 Series Touring, the Audi A4 Avant, and the Mercedes C-Class Estate. And also, the boot is electrically operated, so you can wave your foot underneath the bumper and it'll open up for you. And then you've got levers, so you can fold down the rear folding seats. If practicality really is your number one priority, it's worth remembering that the Arteon is basically the same mechanically as a Passat. And because the Passat has a boxier shape, access to the rear seats is much easier if you need to get in some child seats. And also you've got bigger boot space. Same goes for the Skoda Superb. What you're meant to do is look at the Arteon and go, oh my God, that is so sexy. And it's practical as well. I can't believe it. Just take my deposit. You're not supposed to go, oh, let me just get this straight. What I'm looking at here is similar to a Passat, but actually it's less practical and more expensive. The engine range starts with 148 brake horsepower, 1.5 litre petrol that returns 41.9 miles per gallon with CO2 emissions of 153 grams per kilometre. The entry-level 148 brake horsepower 2-litre diesel runs 54.5 miles per gallon and CO2 of 136 grams per kilometre. Moving up to the 197 brake horsepower version of the 2-litre diesel doesn't affect economy too drastically, which can't be said for upgrading to the bigger petrol engine. Now, our car claims 35.6 miles per gallon and CO2 emissions of 179 grams per kilometre putting it in the top benefit in kind tax band. Only the standalone high performance Arteon R model is less economical, which isn't surprising considering it has 316 brake horsepower. Now just over half of all Arteons sold will go to company car drivers. So it means you'll mostly see them whizzing up and down motorways. And that is where this car is at its best. We've got a two litre petrol engine here, which is nice and powerful. Seven speed automatic gearbox, which helps keep it nice and relaxing. This is definitely a comfortable cruiser. And I think with the shape of the car, it helps keep it nice and quiet, even when you're at high speeds. Then there's the optional acoustic pack, which we have here, naturally. So that includes sound insulated glass and extra sound deadening, so that even when you're driving, it is so whisper quiet in here. Then what you do is you become at one with your inner self. You switch on that massage function and you become at peace the serenity and the atmosphere. The emissions figures that I mentioned a few moments ago may not help you feel particularly serene if you're one of those company car drivers thinking about your annual tax bill or if you're just worried about running costs. All the models mentioned fall in or around the 30% benefit in kind band at the very least. Fear not, however, for that is where the new plug-in hybrid option comes in. The Elegance and R-Line trims are available with VW's familiar 215 brake horsepower, 1.4 litre petrol electric powertrain. And that means official CO2 emissions of just 27 grams per kilometre. Abracadabra, you got yourself an Arteon in the 11% benefit in kind bracket. If you're trying to decide which model makes the best company car, you can pretty much ignore all the others. And private buyers who are able to regularly charge the battery will appreciate the lower running costs too. Now the actual performance of this engine, which is 187 brake horsepower, which is pretty respectable, will get you 0 to 62 
in 7.8 seconds, which is pretty quick for a car of its size, and also has plenty of torque, which really, an estate normally feels better with a diesel engine underneath it, but it seems to be doing pretty fine with the petrol engine that we've got. Now, unfortunately, the ride steering and handling when you're away from the motorway is slightly less satisfying. I mean, the 3 Series Touring has got this car beat in every department. The suspension can sometimes feel a bit brittle, so it's quite harsh when you're on bad roads. And even though the steering is precise, it's got that typical VW trait of just lack of feel. Now, despite the firm setup, the Arteon rolls more in corners than the BMW. The BMW's automatic gearbox is also a lot smoother. And if you're using the paddles to change gear as you're driving, it does make the car feel a little bit more involving. But the different driving modes don't really make it much better. Right, time for some Arteon shooting brake deal makers and deal breakers. The Arteon shooting brake combines practicality with good looks, proving an estate car doesn't have to look boxy and boring. It makes a great car for long motorway journeys where it's quiet, comfortable and refined. A BMW 3 Series might feel slightly plusher, but very few will argue with the overall feeling of the quality in here. There are more practical estates that cost less and more desirable rivals that cost pretty much the same. I think the Arteon shooting brake is a great looking car and it makes sense when so many people want a stylish looking car that's posh on the inside as well, that VW would want to zhuzh up the Passat a bit. And I think the shooting brake is definitely more attractive than the Passat, both inside and out, even if it is pretty much the same underneath. The trouble is, this is three and a half grand more expensive than the Passat, and the Passat remains the more practical car, even if it doesn't look as good. If you're after a practical family estate car, by all means, shortlist the Arteon shooting brake, especially if you want something a little bit out of the ordinary. But it's also worth considering the Passat estate and the BMW 3 Series touring before you take the plunge. If you found this video useful, then why not watch our best and worst video for the BMW 3 Series Touring or our Estates Car playlist. Thanks for watching.